Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. We've got a busy show again for you. We'll talk Bulldog football, we'll check in and preview the Ferris State hockey team, and we'll check in on Bulldog athletics marketing and promotions. First up, uh, head coach Tony Anise with the Ferris State football team. Coach, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Rob. Glad to be here. Coach, you went on the road this uh, past Saturday night, taking on the number 16 team in the country in Saginaw Valley State. And, uh, a competitive game that went into overtime. Uh, unfortunately, you come out on the short end of a, a 31 to 24 decision, but uh, still, nonetheless, have to be proud of the the effort of your kids. Yeah, the efforts, uh, efforts there, the attitudes there. It's just, uh, you know, you you only have so many opportunities to to get W's, and and uh, you know, the all the alternative is a loss, and uh, we're frustrated with the loss, obviously, but uh, you know. We just need to need to be able to settle in and not make mistakes and be able to be competitive and and uh, you know it, it's it's turn the page and go 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 get uh, go get our next uh, opponent because we you know we have an opportunity to go to Grand Valley and compete with them. It seemed like a, a game that went uh, back and forth and and came down to really one or two two few plays here or there that really uh, determined the outcome of the game. Yeah, I thought uh, you know we 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 started kind of slow, particularly on defense, but. Uh, in the second half, I thought we just dominated the game and and actually had the ball with three minutes and some change left and uh, had a key turnover up by a touchdown and and uh, game went to overtime and we won the toss and you kind of when you win the toss uh, you you typically want to go second to see what you need to do but uh, probably it would have been smarter for us to go back on offense because um, you know I thought we had a little momentum. Uh, offensively but then when they scored it just I don't know it just uh, it's a struggle uh, just to, to you know that belief has to exist and and we're, we're struggling with that belief that we're a good football team. As we go to the highlights of, of Saturday's game a great crowd and a, a hostile environment in University Center Michigan uh, but yeah. the Bulldogs able to come out quickly on the first drive and, and get three points. Yeah we drove down the field right away and, and scored uh, Austin Cantola hit a, hit a field goal and and uh, you know, it is a great crowd. It's a great venue, actually. You know, they've done a nice job. I haven't been there in a while, and and I didn't grow up too far from there. And and uh, it's a, they've done a nice job with their facility. But uh, I thought our defense, for the most part, did well. I, you know, uh, obviously Jason rushed for over 200 yards in the game for, you know, a redshirt freshman running uh, our offense and running downhill pretty effectively. He did a nice job. Here he uh, hit, here hits Jake Lampman for a touchdown, and and. Uh, you know, we're back in the game. We we're down 14 to three at the time, and 14 to 10. And uh, there's Jamar Wimberley selling out to, to to block a a pass, and and they try to strike deep. I thought we did a great job with uh, their best receiver and their quarterback, who you know is is you know a dynamic player. I thought for the most part we did well. Here, uh, Dwayne Williams takes an option play, and you know we're doing a good job with the option. Jason's managing that part of the game. We just need to do better with the pass game and. And we need to do better with ball security. You know, we're minus uh, minus eight in the turnover ratio, which is it's hard to win here. Um, there's great screen to Skyler for a first down. Um, we also got to manage our down and distance situations because third third and long for us is a very difficult thing. Um, here, Trico Cersei takes it on a big run. Their perimeter running was great um, for the most part. You know, the whole game had over 500 yards of total offense and. Uh, Top two offenses in the in the conference coming into the contest here. Jason Vanderlin, a, a great run for a diving touchdown and, and gives you the lead. Uh, just just talk about offensively. Obviously, uh, you had a lot of yardage and, and a lot of big plays on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, we did. We just uh, you know the the things we uh, we're looking to get, we're getting. Um, we just need to be better with ball security and uh, you know managing the passing game a little bit more effectively. Um, other than that, I, you know it's it's one of those things that. Uh, you know we're growing, we're we're getting better in a lot of areas, but we we need to get the W. You get the go-ahead touchdown to take a 24 to 17 lead, and, and defense was per, pretty stout the entire second half. Really held a, a prolific Saginaw Valley State offense in check for most of the way. Yeah, for the most part, you know we did a great job in the secondary. I thought we uh, disguised coverages pretty effectively and and uh, made them really work for everything. We didn't give them uh, a lot of big plays. You know they had to grind it out with their short pass game and. And uh, you know that was a huge play right there. It's fourth and two, and we got the stop and and two first downs. And uh, you know we said two first downs, and we win the game. Unfortunately, we scored. We got one first down, and then we 
turn it over on, on when we're going to get the second first down. Second of LA State able to score with a minute 25 left and uh, both teams actually had an opportunity uh, at the end of regulation and then as we see the Cardinals uh, score uh, in overtime and unfortunately uh, you're not able to, to match it in the, in the overtime session. Yeah, you know, we uh, in, in the end of regulation we you had a big run, we got down there, and then we had a penalty which uh, put us back to second and 12 and tried to throw the ball to, to KG and we missed on that one, third and 12, you know. Um, those are down and distances that aren't very all that, you know, right now with the young team, we're not manageable and it's tough for us to make those kind of big plays. And uh, so it, it hurt us, the penalty hurt us, but um, all in all, again, I'm proud of the effort and the attitude's been great. And we just need to get that winning mentality. Um, you know, it's going to come. I just uh, hope it comes sooner rather than later. Obviously, uh, a tough loss to take, uh, but shouldn't have a, much of a much of a problem getting your kids ready to play again as you as you head to Allendale to take on your rival Grand Valley State this Saturday. Yeah, I just hope uh, you know we have the right mindset and we go there to compete and believe that we can we can win that game. You know, uh, you know, part of the part of this thing is such a it's such a mental thing and and overcoming that mindset that, hey, you know, we don't know how good we are kind of deal. We're competing with nationally ranked opponents. We, you know, we just got to overcome those nationally ranked opponents and, and get the Ws. And, and part of that is just the right kind of mindset and right kind of approach that, you know, we are a good team and believing that we're going to be, you know, the kind of team that can go, go uh, to a place like Allendale and knock off the fourth ranked team in the nation. Obviously your first uh, experience here with the Anchor Bone Classic, but uh, you've been around West Michigan long enough uh, to know the rivalry between Ferris State and Grand Valley. W what do you expect coming in on Saturday? Well, first off, uh, you know, they, they went up to Michigan Tech and got a huge win, which, uh, you know, I, I was, you know, if I had to pick that game, I would have picked Tech, honestly. And so, you know, I think Coach Mitchell's done a great job with this group. He's had injuries, you know, he lost his starting quarterback. and. Uh, you know, they, they've been really honestly remarkable because last year uh, at this time when Ferris went to play them, you know, they had three losses. And so I think they've done a great job of preparing their kids. And, and we just need to go out there and, 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 and compete with them. You know, uh, I told our guys, you know, we're, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, all, all the things that, uh, you know, facility-wise, those don't win. You know, it's just a matter of just the 11 guys on the field performing to the best of their ability. And, and going and competing and uh, you know I would like to be able to think that we can run the ball on them and keep their offense off the off the field we're uh, you know and right now they're the number one ranked offense in the GLIAC we're the number one rushing team in the in, in the GLIAC so if we can rush the ball effectively keep them off the field a little bit you know keep it tight you know uh, we have nothing to lose at this point in time if we can go there and get a W then you know we're back in the GLIAC North race uh, but we need to go there with a sense of urgency and believe that we can compete with them. Well, Coach, best of luck as you, as you get ready to head to Allendale on Saturday night. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update after this.